guys, how's it going? Today, I wanna to show you the five steps that I go through to get our raised beds ready for planting in the spring. So the first step I do is clean out my raised beds. I wanna start with a blank slate, so any debris, plant material, leaves that have collected over the course of the winter, I like to clean all of that up. Unless you have perennials in your raised beds, which sometimes we do, like strawberries or asparagus, in which case you would just clean up around those crops. In my garden here, I have garlic. We typically plant in the fall, don't harvest until the following July. I have two beds full of garlic, so I just made sure that I weeded those beds and picked up any debris that collected around the plants that actually came up last fall before winter hit. It doesn't take many tools for this job because typically raised beds are really easy to work in. The soil is usually premium and nice and loose. Uh, most things will come out by hand fairly easily. I had some green onions though this year that had all rooted together in a big mass. So in that case where it's really hard to get them out and they keep popping off right at soil level, it's so frustrating when that happens, I'll use a small like handheld digging fork to help loosen up that root ball so I can get it out. And then I use a rake to clean up the area around the raised bed because I always make a mess on our ground. Gravel. The rake I like to use is actually called a shrub rake. It's from Fiskars. It's not like the highest quality. It's made from plastic and I'm missing some tines on the end. I really need to replace mine, but I like the flexibility of it. It seems to run over the top of our gravel and other plants when I'm working in flower beds without damaging them. Uh, so I really do like that rake quite a bit. And then I use my pop-up bag that has the hard bottom so I can drag it on the gravel without damaging it. That's it for tools. The second thing I do, and this is a really simple step, is take my drip tubing out of our raised bed and flop it over the side. It doesn't mean I'm necessarily going to replace any of the drip parts. Uh, I tack mine down with landscape staples so I can just pop the staples up. I uh, have my drip all run in one, it's one line, so it can just lay over the side of the raised bed and it gives me access to the soil. So my recommendation to you guys when you are running your drip system, run it in a way that it's easy to lift it up and move it out so that you can amend your soil, work on that if you need to. And that brings me to step number three, which is to amend your soil. And I do this by adding a layer of compost on the top of each one of our raised beds. And I find it helpful for a couple of different reasons. One, I've noticed a huge increase in yields and production of both flowers and vegetables when I do this. We've been using the land and sea compost for like the past three or four years, have noticed great results with that. Also, I notice when I remove old crops, typically it removes some of the soil that's in your raised beds. It's all stuck to the root systems and our raised beds need to be topped up anyway just due to that and soil settling. So it kind of serves both purposes and when you have plants growing in a raised bed situation it's kind of like a giant container. I mean our raised beds they are sitting on top of native soil and we don't have any lining underneath uh, so there's no landscape fabric or anything underneath ours so if our crops wanted to grow below the 12 inches of soil that they have and grow into native soil they could absolutely do that. They don't typically so they're utilizing the nutrients that are just in this little raised bed in this box And so if we're not replenishing the soil eventually these plants are not going to be as productive So for this step you might have your own compost that you've been working on that you're adding into your raised bed Which I think is amazing uh, You can use like pre-bagged like we do There's lots of different brands of pre-bagged compost which are good You can go bulk which a lot of rock yards I find I know here locally a lot of rock yards have bins of gravel uh, Mulches they also have a bin or two of compost that you can get and if you've got a lot of raised beds, a lot of area to cover, that would definitely be a cost-effective way to go. There's also manures that you can, you can use. Pre-bagged ones, I think, would make me more comfortable because I don't know a lot in, this, in the manure realm. <laughs> Um, so I know pre-bagged manures have been aged properly and they'll give you instructions on how much to spread so that you won't accidentally burn your plants. If you get manure out of, you know, your pasture or your friend's pasture and it's free and that's awesome, but it hasn't been aged properly, it can be too hot for your plants and cause more harm than good. So I just be careful if you're going to go that route. The fourth thing I do is add in a starter fertilizer. It's kind of like amending your soil. I just pour it on top of the compost that we've just spread and then I use my hands or sometimes I'll use a rake or a digging fork or something to kind of mix it in together and spread it out nice and evenly. We use the Biotone starter fertilizer. It has mycorrhizae in it and what mycorrhizae does is it goes to the roots of your plants and it creates a bunch of new openings instead of the root of your plant just having one opening on the end so that they can absorb a bunch more nutrients. So you've got all this wonderful compost in there and now it's got your plants have the ability to soak in all the nutrients that your compost has. Now I don't use that starter fertilizer later on in the season. So in a vegetable garden I'll typically come along maybe once or twice 
later on in the season once the plants are more established. And I'll use something like a garden tone, tomato tone, or maybe berry tone if we are dealing with strawberries. And I will side dress those plants with the appropriate fertilizer. So the starter fertilizer is something I just use right now when I'm prepping the beds and then also later on in the season once I've cleaned out the beds and I'm prepping them again for a new crop. And the last step, step number five, is to set our drip system back up, which might mean just flopping the drip tube back over the side of your raised bed and tacking it back down with your landscape staples. It might mean replacing it. We have very hard water here, so sometimes we find that some of the emitters have been plugged from past year's use and we'll replace drip tubing so that we're starting fresh for the season. It's nice to do that when the beds are open and you can see what's going on and you're not working around a bunch of plants. If you don't have your raised bed set up on drip yet, it is so worth the effort to set them up unless you get a lot of rain and it doesn't matter for you in which case I'm really jealous but for us it has been a game changer to figure out our drip and make changes kind of hone the system to where it works really well for us we need to water efficiently here because we don't get a ton of rainfall most plants prefer uh, being watered at the root level not overhead uh, also a drip system makes it to where you can give your plants consistent water like at the same time every day the same amount they really do well with that consistency so for our our raised beds, we initially had this area pretty torn apart. Uh, we had had a tree removed and a dog kennel that had previously been here. And so we had the ability, because I knew where all the raised beds were going to be, to have a faucet brought up in the corner of every one of our raised beds, which I really love because while they're all on the same zone and we can operate them, uh, you know, with a timer and such, it's nice to be able to turn off beds that I don't currently have anything planted in because maybe I've harvested something, but I'm not quite ready to plant the next thing maybe for a few weeks. It's nice to be able to turn it off, which you could put a valve in any drip line to do this, but I kind of look like the look of the faucets. I can come along and turn that off. That bed will not receive water until it needs to. I really like that. So then we have to have a little adapter. So a three quarter inch um, female adapter that <laughs> adapts down to a quarter inch drip tube that we uh, screw onto the end of each faucet then we can push our drip tubing right up in that and then run it in our beds so we use the quarter inch brown drip tubing that has emitter holes every six or nine inches which either one of them works well and you can usually find one of those at a store that has irrigation supplies and I run uh, four passes in the three foot length three foot width sections of our raised beds and I find that that works really well I use landscape staples to tack it down so again it's easy to lift the whole thing up and kind of flop it over the side of the bed so that I can access it when I need to clean it out or when I need to amend the soil. A couple of things that haven't worked in this space that we have changed, I started off using the quarter inch soaker hose. So it's usually black, it's kind of rougher and it weeps water instead of having holes every so often that emit the water. And I found that the water flow wasn't the same from the beginning of the soaker hose to the end, like it would be really strong and really saturate the soil the first half of my run. And then toward the end, it wouldn't put out very much water at all. And some of these beds are fairly small you should be able to go like a three by four bed I would assume that you could make that amount of a run with the soaker hose and still have it work properly but it didn't work very well for us it also fell apart really quickly our elements can be kind of harsh like the brutal sun over 100 degrees for several days if it's things are exposed to that they break down um, kind of quickly. Also with the quarter inch that we are currently using, so the quarter inch brown drip tubing with the emitter holes every six or nine inches, you want to be careful about how far you run that drip tubing. Like I probably wouldn't recommend going over 10 or 15 feet with it. Otherwise you're going to run into the same kind of flow issues where you've got really good um, water at the beginning, kind of pour at the end. Like the L-shaped beds that we have, it's pushing it. Every time I use that quarter inch in there, I run it quite far. And so I watch that. And sometimes I have to replace or I'll make it into a little bit more of a grid system which sometimes can help. Like I will um, cut in and put T's in and run drip tubing in between the runs, if that makes sense, just to kind of connect things together a little bit better and create more ways for the water to go. Um, so you just want to be careful with that. In that case, if you've got a really big raised bed or a big area to do, you might consider half inch. That might be a better fit. That's it, you guys. So we got all of our beds prepped today using those five steps. I'm so excited. I actually have plants ready to go for tomorrow. We're going to plant a bunch of spring crops, which I will film a video showing you guys everything that's going in, things that are more cold tolerant that can take a little bit of a frost. Uh, so stay tuned for that video. I hope this was helpful to you guys just to see the process that we go through this spring to get ready to go. Thank you so much for watching and we will see you in the next video. Bye.